creative ideas came to my mind. And I started to put down some things. What happened was I lost, I thought I lost part of my story, the second story, some of the story. And Tommy said, no, 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 it's in another file. Don't worry, it's there, it's there. And I'm looking for it and looking for it, and I couldn't find it. And he said to me, don't give up, don't give up, it's there. And it took me four hours, I found it. It actually was there. And Oh, yeah. And I was really amazed by that. And I said, wow, you know, just stand where you are, because wherever, if he stood on my left side, the computer would go nuts. If he stood on my right side, it was fine. This, this <laughs> would happen occasionally. Yes, his energy, I could feel his energy, and his energy would s- screw up the computer if he was on, one, on the other side. So he said, oh, he's, oh, he's on my right side. So anyway, I found it, and I said, you know what? I'm going to write, because... I feel I can do it now. And I started writing. And I told my editor, and my editor said, you know what, it's time to publish. And I said, okay, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to publish on his birthday, on Tommy's birthday. That's when I wanted to publish. It was June 5th. Interesting. And we were going to have a a launch date. And the launch date was on June 5th. And we went to Ken's diner. I met my uh, my lawyer there, and gave him the book. And Ken's diner is in the book. It's the best restaurant in Chicago. Well, actually, Skokie. And it's the best restaurant in heaven. Yes, there's a restaurant in heaven. <laughs> and it's very interesting. <laughs> if if you read the book, so I actually launched the book. And people started buying the book, which was really, really nice. And I, my husband said, you know what you should do? You should give a percentage, and you should put this in your book, which I did, um, giving a percentage of each paperback sold to the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. I oh, thought that was yeah. a, yeah. I thought that was a very good idea my husband came up with. And we even dedicated it to, to the wives, and we dedicated it to the people, and you know, the fans of Badfinger, and we dedicated to certain people that who've been there all along and who helped me all along. And I had a circle of people who knew about Tommy, and I went ahead. I, my lights just went off. I can't believe this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I hope, I hope your phone line hangs in there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it will hang in there. I'm in the kitchen now. And um, basically, So what happened was, where was I? So, um, he had people who were with me and the circle of people who knew. And I told them, if you ever leave the circle, I will deny that he existed and that anything happened. I wouldn't deny it because I was that very paranoid about it. Right. And so paranoid. And... They stuck, they stuck with me, and they understood, and um, I, have girlfriend who, I have a girlfriend who understands, and my husband definitely understands this. I mean, he's, he's run into search, certain situations with Tommy, with Paprika, because the pe- Paprika would keep changing different places, and we never touched it. And Tommy would always say, oh, put more paprika in this and put put, put paprika in that. (laughs) And I I never ever found out why he liked paprika. But so I was getting great reviews and um, I got a good editorial review from Reader's Favorites. And um, I also did the Rick Hogan show. And Rick Hogan is a friend of mine and he had an after hours show. And we didn't talk about the paranormal stuff. We just basically, you know, we talked about just the book and everything like that at the time. And, um, you know, this is the first really time that I'm really talking about it, to tell you the truth. Well, you know, I talked you about it with you, and, and um, I'm actually talking about the things that I can confirm. Right. And the things that I can confirm, I'm, I, you know, that just goes in one ear, not the other ear, as they say. Right. 
Well, and you, know, you, can, you can confirm tonight that the lights went out right in the middle of our interview. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I can confirm that. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, now, wondering here's if, the I'm wondering if Tommy is listening in. Oh, yes. He is listening in. I'm sure he is. I'll I'm bet. sure. I, I think the lights are on a timer, so that's why they went off. They go off at a certain time. So I'm in oh, the kitchen this time. And... um so um, the interesting thing is that when I've, I talked to you, something interesting had happened. And as I said, I can be very skeptical about things that happen. And um, only when I get the confirmation. But you know what? I'm always waiting for the next confirmation. I always do. That's the way I am. Yeah. And here's an interesting thing that I really wanted to talk about. I thought this was interesting. My son had to go for an MRI, and um, I was very concerned about it, and I could not sleep very well, and I woke up at 2 in the morning, and Tommy just happened to come in, and he said to me, Joyce, he said, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be okay. The MRI's going to come out fine. And I said to Tommy, Tommy, you, you can't promise me that. You can't do that. <laughs> and he said, yes, I can. He says, I get it from a higher source. I said, okay, fine. And then he said, I'm going to rub your back and you go to sleep. So I let him rub my back and I felt the tingles in the, and I felt his hand on my back. Wow. Honestly, yeah. And I started falling asleep and then I felt like this jilt, like he, he hit a, a nerve or something on my back. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, and I realized that, you know, he was really doing this. And the next day, I, I wanted to find out about the MRI, and my, husband, my son said, well, I don't have any information yet. And Tommy came that night again and said to me, it's going to be okay. It's still okay. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to work out. And the next morning, I'm waiting for the results. My son's waiting for the results, and there's nothing. That night... Around 5 o'clock, my son, I called my son, and, I, and my son said to me, Guess what, Mom? Everything's okay. The, I had the MRI, and the results, they didn't find anything. Wow. And my, I just felt this relief. Of and course. I remember Tommy telling me this. I mean, I would take a lie detector test. And <laughs> I, this really happened. My husband, believe it or not, well, he's doing his radio show right now. He would vouch for me on all this stuff. He, right. he, he, he knows all this stuff that I tell him and everything. And he, he's experienced the paprika thing. And he's experienced other things because Tommy would tell me all the time when my husband would come home from an errand. He would run an errand and he would say, oh, he'd be home at this time. And I'd be like, what? I can't believe this. And he said, yeah. And sure enough, he would come in at the time Tommy would tell me he would come in. And he's 99.9% .9 accurate yeah. all the time. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah. by the way, um, as you have now gone through the story, we are still leaving Tommy off at hunting uh, and actually meeting very various characters throughout mm -hmm. the whole process as he's on his quest to hunt for Pete. Um, yes. I know, I know we don't want to give away the spoiler towards the end of the no. book. But no, we don't want to do that. Definitely is, not. Is there any kind of, uh, uh, you know, hook or detail that you want to give people to, uh, and try to get them to read this even further and further until you get to the end of the story. I would think it would be fascinating for you to tell a few of the most amazing things that uh, are in your book, if you could. Well, let's see. Well, he has some run-ins with some people who actually have met Pete. This one lady, he, she calls him Petey, and Tommy finds out that that he's actually on a higher level, but he visits different people. And Brian Epstein is in the book, 
in a way. He's mentioned uh-huh. in the book. Elvis is mentioned in the book. Oh. Um, I mean, when people, let's just put it this way. This is what the people are saying that are reading my book. They are saying it is the kind of book they can't put down. This is what they're saying. I'll bet. Either they can't put it down or it's a real page turner. Yeah. That's what they've been telling me. And let me clarify, too, because when you said that uh, Pete was on a different level than Tommy, in the book you've mentioned the fact that there are different levels or dimensions of heaven. Is that right? Yes. There are seven different levels of heaven, and Tommy ends up on a higher level because he was cremated. And Pete also ends up on a higher level because he was cremated. That is something that Tommy and I had talked about, and I found out that this was actually something that um, a spiritual person had told me, that that happens to some some very interesting. So even though they ended up on the same level in heaven, it took them quite a while to uh, run across each other, it sounds like. <laughs> well, there's a second uh, book that's in the works right now, and it's very interesting. And like I said, I don't want to give away the ending. Right. And um, But um, I want to give everybody a chance I, I don't know how many Badfinger fans are out there, but... Um, I think I have, you'd be surprised. Uh, I have something happening. It's actually a Badfinger trivia contest, and it's starting November 5th to November 29th. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question about Badfinger, something related to my book. And at the end of the contest... Whoever gets the most correct answers will win an autographed copy of my book. That's right. And all they have to do to enter is they they pay 99 cents for the e-book, and then they give me on my my, uh, email, which is SharonJ0023 at yahoo.com. This confirmation, you know, like maybe an invoice or something, so I know that they bought the ebook, and then I will put them in this particular closed group where they can play the game. That's oh. one of the things that I want to do. And well, they that have. Would be, that would be fun for your fans, I believe, yeah. uh, because they are into the details of that book, so they're going to have yeah. to uh, answer a few questions. And uh, the idea that they're going to get an autograph from you on your hard copy. Is that right? Yes. They will get an autographed copy, and they will get everybody who plays the game is going to get the snippet that started the whole entire process. Oh. They're going to get that blurb. Yes. And, and it's not, it has not been touched. I asked my editor whether we should edit it or not. He said no. He said leave it untouched. He yeah. says it's just perfect the way it is. It is, by the way. And <clears throat> as we're uh, talking about the blurb, the, the snippet that started the whole process, um, I think it'd be appropriate at this point to tell folks how amazing of an artist you are. And some of oh, the well, great, okay. great uh, paintings or, or drawings that you've actually done of some of these rock stars that we're talking about. Yeah. I've lost actually all of the physical ones in the in the shed, but I put them down on uh, on the flash drive. I um, copied them, and um, my editor and I we put together the book, and we have little tidbits at, underneath each picture of the of the rock star, and that's what I'm going to get to next. But first, I want to finish off the thing with the um, the bad thing, the trivia. Because um, we're coming to a close, so people can start reading the book. So by September 30th, um, people should, you know, have, you know, the book. You know, they should buy it. Because after that, people will need to read the book, and I'll start the contest on November 5th. So they'll have enough time 
to read it. Now, here's something even extra. 